I am who I think you think. Think I am. I, hope. I just want to talk about love for a certain amount of time. You'll be amazed if you listen if you know the okay, history. Okay. So then, then <laughs> I am so You're excited for this because I was a part. <laughs> the eighth mm. second I stopped playing. So after that I haven't seen you guys mingling. <laughs> crush. I never had a crush on my friend. If I've had crushes in college, I've had yeah. best friends who make wonderful couples if you consider it yeah. that way. Like you all are married yeah. and everything. I just want to talk about love for a certain amount of time. Uh, can you like tell me? Uh, I don't want to start with the like history, like how it has happened, mm-hmm. all of that. Like I don't want to dive into all of that because you'd be amazed if you listen if you know the okay, history. Okay, okay. So then, then sure. <laughs> I just thought because you might have a time constraint or something like that. Ah uh, no, I'm I'm cool. I'm cool. Okay, no worries. Yes. So. In short, you know, I am so know, excited for this because <laughs> I was a part of the tournaments. I would see you guys like, playing on separate sides. Hey, yeah, but not that time. <laughs> no, not, <laughs> not that time. But I'm saying when, when I, I am so amazed because I was a I was distant from that thing because in the eighth mm-hmm. standard I stopped playing. So after that I haven't seen you guys mingling. <laughs> it happened much later. Anyway, I'll yeah, tell you. Yeah. yeah. So basically. Uh, you know we all know each other since childhood so we know our chubby faces how we were we we know all that so you know when your childhood friends that automatically liking somebody doesn't really yeah. happen yes i've yeah. noticed this i never looked at my friends with you know that <laughs> crush i never had a crush on my friend if i've had crushes in college i've had yeah. with, with friends hey eh? my friend you know that never <laughs> happens <laughs> never yeah. does it happen it's very rare it's rare right it's because i think you have such comfort levels with them so that excitement is not there but you're very mm. comfortable with them but if you actually consider i think best friends will make wonderful couples if you consider it yeah, that way true. okay but it depends i believe in that side are. of love <laughs> it's a i have a different yeah mind yeah come <laughs> okay so basically uh, um just like you stop playing i stop playing for a while i think when i was in eighth standard <laughs> and i started playing again in after my 12th in, ah, in college love, no? Uh, but twelfth, I played that one tournament, just national. Like I played, I played the state under fifteen. It was before my twelfth, twelfth standard. I played under fifteen state. Shall I came first? Oh, national! Let's go to the national. And then I think that tournament changed or some kind of thing in me because I think eighth standard I completely stopped because I did not want to play, not because of my parents. Mm. I was not interested. You know, you reach a stage where you're like, I don't want it. Like you know, you just don't want it anymore in your life. Like it's not what you want to do. So it was what I did. And eleventh standard, I. Did not play a single tournament, not even a local tournament. You know, we used to have rapid tournaments on weekends in Goa. Hmm. I did not play anything. No state, no. I am not interested in chess. I said no, no. Tata bye. But twelfth standard, just before twelfth, I played that in the holiday time, the selection and the national. I came in the prize list from nowhere. I didn't play chess for four years. Came in the prize list. I was like shocked. Oh wow! I think that affected me to some extent. After the twelfth standard break, though, I. Uh, Felt like playing again, you know. Immediately after the boards in April, there was there was a tournament in Goa. Immediately in April, I was like so happy. Oh, tournament again in April. Exams over. I have a tournament in you know a couple of days. <laughs> Chalo, let's go and play. I think then you know slowly wanted to get back. After a certain age, you feel you know I'm miss something's missing in my life, and you know what is missing. So like you go back there. But I don't regret not playing last thirteen. At that stage of my life, I did not want chess. Chess was not part of me. I would, I would have probably, probably been frustrated playing chess at that point of time. That's why I stopped, right? But then I started later. So anyway, this is just my chess journey, which I've added to the uh, love journey. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So after that, uh, I uh, that year I got selected for the national B national open, hmm. national open and national senior championship open category. That is not women's but open. Hmm. Okay. So Anurag was playing that national. You know Avinash sir, right? Avinash Malhotra. He yeah. was playing, and I was playing. Three, we got selected. Three of us went, and after the whole tournament, we actually went touring. My mom was with me, and they. So we were four of us from Goa, and we went touring on that last day. We we had time for the bus. We used to not travel by flights those days. That was a long journey. Buses we used to travel, no buses and trains. So we had time. So we went around. And I think when we went around, Anurag somehow you know felt something. Probably because he saw me after so many years, it kind of helped. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he kind of I think he kind of liked it. When I ask him, he always says like he found me very creative at that point of time. I was into photography. You know, we had those. Dab- I had a dabba phone, but still I wanted to be photographs of everything. I remember asking him this band in tree looks like Hanuman. No, look at this. This crowd looks like this. <laughs> okay, so you know different things. 
So I think that touring where we spend time together, I mean, what I was 17, he was 16. He's a year younger to me. So yeah, I was 17 after my 12th. Yeah, exactly after my 12th. Went for the nationals, we spent time. And that is where it began. We exchanged numbers. He kind of liked me. Then he met, we met a couple of times after that because he was also a good friend to my brother, right? He's Niraj's good friend. So even though we are our good friends, he would come home or tournaments, we would meet here and there. But we were already, you know, higher teenagers, 16, 17, 18 after that, one year after that. So we could go, I was, we were in college, so we could go out and come back. It's not that we are stuck at home, right? Like when we're in school. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so we started meeting up like that. Again, I never met him alone, okay? At that time, I was never comfortable. We didn't date. So he kind of told me he liked me that time. Like after a year and a half, he took to tell me he liked me. <laughs> <laughs> and after that, um, in total, I think probably, um, I didn't say yes to him anyway. After seven years, I, uh, I said, okay, we'll go on a date. <laughs> so he kind of was there. He liked me. He did, He probably he says he didn't like anybody else in between. So yeah, he was loyal enough. So <laughs> yeah, I said, okay. So that's how it started. As I mentioned, I took the risk. I was not the person who would take the risk. I did not want to get into something which, you know, like I was always the obedient child. As I mentioned earlier, I would always think, what will my mom think about it? Oh, she'll not like it. I won't do it. Every time, my mom, my mom, my mom, my mom. When I started dating him, I was 23, 24, whatever. Imagine 24. Then I said, no, I have to take my own decision now. I cannot always think about my mom, right? What will my mom think? Oh, like every time it was my mom. You know, it's somehow that's the way we are brought up, right? What will my parents think about it? And my parents will always think, what will others think about it? And then think mm -hmm. about what they will think about it. They don't have their own decision. For them, it's about other people. <laughs> so yeah, I took that risk. After seven years, he again asked me on a date. Then I said, okay, we'll see. Let's go. After I didn't tell him immediately though. I took a while and told him, okay. Then, uh, yeah, then it started. So very late after seven years of this, that's the story. <laughs> <laughs> what, if, what have you learned from your relationship with him? Because I have seen uh, a lot of the times where you take his name in uh, a certain hmm. part of the, this. So what, how has he impacted your life or what has he brought to your life? One thing I mentioned is I don't go back to stuff. So usually when we have a conflict and all, I am the one who shows some anger. <laughs> Even if I know that I should not get angry. This, uh... <laughs> She's enjoying her. <laughs> I'm usually see that. If you just look at me normally, I'm usually anybody sees me, I'm the calm one. Even in a chess game, I've got compliments that I finished the game, I've gone home. People don't know that I lost or won the game. They have to literally come and ask me, Anna, they don't know the result. If they don't, they cannot figure out with my face what has happened. So this one time, you won't imagine it is Anurag's example. Oh, let me add it here. This <laughs> tournament where I, uh, it was in Panjim somewhere. Okay. And uh, we both are young though. This is when we both, I was like 13 years old. He must have been 12. There was a stone. You remember Chinmay party? Uh, I remember one Chinmay. Yeah, that one Chinmay. It's the same <laughs> Chinmay. So basically that tournament, uh, I came second in the all Goa tournament. So Apne Roble came first, if I'm not wrong. I came second, Anurag came third. And I beat Anurag in the last round. Okay. And that's why I came second. Anurag was poor guy was leading the whole tournament and then came third. Anyway, <laughs> I beat him in the last round. And I finished the game. I gave the result. And this Chinmay's dad is like, what happened to your game? Like, did you win? Did you lose? Cannot figure out. Like. I said, I won. He's like, why are you not happy? I'm like, I'm happy inside. <laughs> it's just not showing. <laughs> so, okay, but one more thing is one more thing. As chess players, we are, we know, uh, or at least we learn to some extent to manage our emotions, you know, uh, to keep yeah. them at par, keep it, you know, you don't need to show it. This is yeah. one thing I I actually like about chess players in, yeah. in in comparison to other sports. I'm not saying that they are bad or anything. Yeah, you can't just general, wake up and just go, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. You can't just no. do that because there are people around. Yeah, and even then, you know, I would never do it in front of my opponent. Like, for example, yeah. there are times I still remember where I won against an international master and stuff like that. Now, the, it, they are way stronger than me. But on that particular day, I played better than them. I beat them. But if I'm going to play a match against them, I'm not going to beat them, right? Mm. They're just way stronger than me. But you know, it doesn't mean you cannot be somebody stronger than you, right? Oh, sure. So these uh, international masters, I remember I, 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 this first time I beat an IM, I still remember. And in my mind, you have no idea. I was thinking, I know I'm winning the game, but in my mind, it was on my mind. If he asked me a draw, I will accept, even though I know I'm winning the game. I'm checkmating mm. him, but I will accept. You know that 
confidence was not there like i didn't want to disrespect him not confidence i didn't want to disrespect him basically that was the point okay that was too much of that was a bit too much i should not have been that way if you're winning the game you should win the game okay but in general after winning the game i did not do this i did not go and say yes i won i did not do anything i just signed the score sheets you know spoke to my opponent and till i went out i did not even smile the automatic i saw my mom i got to smile mm, that's how it but, happened yeah but the point is i didn't it's not nice to show that in front of your opponent mm-hmm. you know you learn according to me you learn to respect your opponent yeah. to some extent when you play chess because you keep your emotions you know grounded you're like yeah. you got to control them now we don't do it consciously you know it happens unconsciously but mm-hmm. it's a good learning it's a good learning when you think mm-hmm. about it then you realize oh it's a good thing that you know we're keeping it there so i i love that because it dates back to some thing that i'd heard on some podcast like it comes to the three e's it's like element energy and environment i've heard that one which yeah. podcast i don't remember i've heard yeah. that <laughs> yeah so the element if you if you take michael jordan out yeah. of basketball out of basketball, you put, basketball. It, you put it in somewhere you put him in somewhere some other sport he may not be able to perform such in tendulkar yeah. you take him out of cricket you put him somewhere yeah. may not be able to perform same way energy are you in a high do you work well in a high energy environment mm-hmm. or do you work well in a low energy environment and the third one is the environment the place that you are surrounded by so when when we have people who are you know thinking and playing the game it used to mm-hmm. happen in the start it's not like it never happened with us there would be times when we would talk or we would celebrate or something like that and then the other people would be like you know the other people are there yeah, also so we would consider just respect. that yeah. yeah you consider so that, them yeah yeah so that that's that is important. one thing and also another thing is the part where you said about thinking about another person and stuff like that like you used to think your mom uh, would say something and you would not do mm-hmm. this is a thing that happens in our generation only it's like uh, like jay shetty talks about this it's not my quote okay uh, it's like i am not who i think i am i am not who you think i am i am who i think you think think i am i heard that too <laughs> we hear a lot of the same podcast yeah yeah so that is what like, that is that is another thing that you know mm. that i just wanted to put out let people mm. understand and appreciate that whole thing but yeah thank yeah, you thank uh, Actually, I I went out of the topic completely. Yeah, you yeah. I was me. about to ask you that again. <laughs> so what did yeah, you do? So I was saying about going back to stuff. So mm. as I mentioned, I I usually don't go back. I just leave it there. You know, incomplete, incomplete. But I just leave it. So with him, uh, it's like he'll always come and he he'll be the ah. The reason I told you all this is because I'm usually the calm person. Mm. But well, sometimes you know, in some relationships, you have to be the other kind. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Uh, so he usually he's the calmer one, and like he settles mm. things down. He has like taught me that okay, whatever it is, you can go back. You can mm. figure things out, sort the problem, and then move forward. It like usually sort the problem, move forward. Whatever it is, solve that issue and then go forward. I think yeah. that is one thing that he always does. I mean, everybody has conflicts, everybody has arguments, but mm. he's always the one. Ninety nine percent of the times, who's going to come to me? I don't go to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is one thing. And okay, if it's not just about uh, the relationship, but in general, what he has taught me is basically to give me and my dreams importance. Mm-hmm. Like I should be the focus, the main character of my life. Mm-hmm. I have not done that for so many years. I mentioned at the beginning, I have not done that. But then it's like I can have goals too, and I've sacrificed a lot. I've sacrificed so much of my chess for my brother earlier, but I don't do that anymore. Mm-hmm. So you all still draw games, though. <laughs> Just... <laughs> to be honest, to be honest, Anish, we <laughs> not draw much. That's what I'm talking about. Sacrifice. Yeah, I love. Yeah. you know i usually always give the point now he may have been stronger or higher rated than me but that does not matter mm-hmm. i always gave up my point because i always believed in him as i mentioned his his tournament victory was my happiness his mm-hmm. goal was my happiness like whatever he achieves something i am happy i never put myself first even when i played tournaments earlier my goal was i have to help him win what do i mean by help him win if i play him he give him the point fine but I will score points against other people, the other top seeds. Yeah, I will bring them down yeah. because I know I'm strong enough to bring them down. I'm one of the top seeds myself, but I'll bring the others down. And you know, mm-hmm. he doesn't have that competition. My goal was always he should win the tournament. I sacrificed so so much because mm-hmm. even in tournaments where I played well, I had to sacrifice my point. Also, mm-hmm. that is again upbringing. If I have to put it out that way, it's just that you know the cycle continued. It was probably told to us when we were younger, then continued, continued, continued. Now I finally broken the cycle. No, no, giving free points. 
I'm like, we played. Whatever oh, happens, happens. <laughs> no, I've sacrificed a lot. I know people will not understand how much it is. When you sacrifice your points for 15 years, no one's going to understand how much it is. You can reach a different level in 15 years. You gain a different level of respect in 15 years. Yeah. Like I don't have that respect as a player in Goa, like what I could have had if I had not sacrificed. Because I've not reached that level, right? I've not achieved mm-hmm. that, which I could have achieved, maybe. Yeah. We don't know as yet. Maybe not, maybe I could. But there's a possibility that I could, right? Yeah. I don't have that respect because I have not achieved it. The reason is me, because I did not stop it earlier. I should have stopped it earlier. I did not. Because when you mentioned family in the family, you know, in our uh, friendly talk, I said not like that for this reason. Like mm. what it remains in the family. I don't believe in that anymore. Earlier it was like he wins or I win. It's the same thing. It's not the same. Yeah. Why should it be the same? You're different individuals, right? At the end, the world looks at you differently. The world looks at me differently. And it's affecting me individually. It's not affecting you. Exactly. So we got to have a differentiation. Of course, I'm happy for you. You're happy for me. But uh, doesn't mean that we should sacrifice our whole lives to somebody else. Yeah. So yeah, this is one thing which Anurag has really brought into this thing. It's like, you got to focus on yourself and he supports a lot. Okay. This is one more reason I have a lot of, you know, I can just speak about these things that I spoke about today, like, yeah. you know, about gender and stuff because he supports a lot. Yeah. He never had any expectations from me. Even now, like he does the most of the work. If I have to say he cleans the dishes, he cleans the house. He has so much. Like it's not expected that I should be doing it because yeah. of my gender. So he helps so much. He doesn't have any expectations. He doesn't put any rules onto me. It's like your life, you, you make a choice. Yeah. Do what you want to do. That's yeah. another thing. So I've got full freedom. So that's where, where I said, I'm like very happy actually. And also another thing here is just him and me. So yeah. I don't have company. I can be alone for most of the times, which I usually prefer being because um, I love being home. Okay, don't get me wrong. I love going home. I love meeting my parents. Oh, being so, uh, like in that solitude. Yeah, uh, uh, there's a reason though. It's because I love my parents. I'm not saying no, but you know, I'm the person who I love meeting my parents, but it drains me of my energy. I'm more of the mm-hmm. introvert kind. So I prefer more alone time and less time meeting people. It drains yeah. my energy for some reason. It's not that I don't like meeting them. I like meeting them. Yeah. Secondly, every time I meet my parents, you know, we had completely two different generations. We have mm-hmm. our viewpoints are it's like Antarctica and I, I, I cannot even give you where it, the place is not on earth. They're two different planets. <laughs> okay. Our viewpoints are so different. So we'll always have a conflict, you know, something or the other. There'll be some conflict. So it's better to be more, you know, I get more alone time here and meet once in a while. I feel it's better because now I've become more rebellious. Earlier I was the obedient kid where, you know, I, being with my parents was the best thing because we never had conflicts and never spoke up. I never ever spoke up. Now it's like anything I see wrong happening to me or to them, I'll speak up. But that's a problem. So the more rebellious I am, I want to keep my distance. I like this alone time. <laughs> the more alone I am, it's better for the relationship. Because yeah, if your viewpoints don't match, then it will create more problems. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's it. Like I've covered all my questions. Is there anything else that you want to share which you could not probably have? tried my best to cover everything. Mm, I spoke about, I don't know so many things I spoke about, which I don't even remember about what I spoke about. <laughs> I don't know what you're going to do with everything we spoke about. <laughs> nah, I don't really have anything in mind. Just okay, that. So I will just end with mm. a small rapid fire. It's supposed to be, oh, okay. a, it's supposed to be a very concise answer. Like okay. I want it to be like one to two lines kind of. Answer. Okay. Okay, uh, so this is a small exercise sort of, and there okay. is no right answer. So you can just give whatever you feel. Okay, and it's about you also. So like, what's the best advice you've ever received? I think my dad has always said this since childhood. If you do not like where you are, move, you are not a tree. He always said this. He in fact printed it and put it on in our house, you know, on the door, you see it because We would not take action. I was a very timid person. As I mentioned, I would not take action. I was always scared Mm. and whatever. My brother was a different personality, but my dad always wanted us to take action. Like he's like, you have to go forward. He wanted us to, you know, not get scared and just do stuff, take this, make decisions. So that's, I always keep that in mind whenever like, you're not at remove. If I feel I'm in a difficult situation, you're not at remove. (laughs) Keep telling myself. What is, what is one rule 
that you wanted everyone to follow in this world if you had the choice to make one rule what would that rule be maybe just let everybody live their lives the way they want to do not poke poke your noses into their lives live your lives work on yourself improve yourself what more do you want that's the best quality of life you can have working on yourself right yeah i think freedom basically simple freedom without without being judged mm -hmm. makes sense uh and the last one uh is it is to promote different minded thinking uh it is one thought or one belief that you have which a lot of the other people may not believe honestly i don't know what to say anisha <laughs> let me think i will give you an answer i know it's rapid fire but <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i'm not getting <laughs> Rapid fire don't work with me. I am very slow. It is supposed to be a tough question. It is supposed to be a tough question because yeah. when, I, when I saw someone talking about this, I was like, "Oh, I can include this in the podcast." Yeah. Ah, uh, something you believe in that others don't believe in, right? May not believe in. Yeah, may not. A lot of in. the majority does not believe in. So it's like just to promote radical minded thinking. To actually go down to the roots and you know. See, I'm helping Equal you out. <laughs> equality, oh, base equality, yes. and equality begins since childhood. Small, small, tiny, tiny things. Basic equality. I'm not talking about big uh, laws. I'm not talking about that. At home, what do your parents when there's a girl and boy? What do they do? How do they bring up the child? What do they tell the child? I think simple equality be begins at home, and I think that should be improved first. Yeah. Equality is what I'll bring. See, I I can give you answers only with my experiences. Yeah, my experiences. my experience my experiences shout equality feminism uh freedom freedom mainly like be free be free be free that is what it's like be a butterfly and keep flying keep flying that is what basically my my experiences say so yeah it may be a bit harsh but that's the way it is cannot help it thank you thank you so much for doing this with me because like it's it's almost been like 2 hours i guess or maybe more or something <laughs> But yeah, thank you, thank you so much, and I really appreciate you completely being yourself, uh, completely allowing yourself to be vulnerable. And I hope I could, in some sense, reduce that baggage a little bit, and uh, at the same time, I could help by putting that experience in the uh, world and telling people that they are not alone, and they have uh, someone who has gone through that and uh, is healing, is growing, and it's a it's a continuous process in life. It may not be something that you will. completely achieved but you just keep getting closer and closer and closer to it so thank you so much for doing this with me thank you so much for having me <laughs> i enjoyed a lot and i think we vibed on this fact that we both don't study <laughs> <laughs> and we both met at bitspilani goa only so i had seen this guy he creates content and everything but i had never met him on campus and i'll i'll show you i'll show you what he did okay he's like he shows me my profile like this he like main khada reh ke dekh raha hu usko and he's like is this you